Welcome back. We're going to continue our study of inverses by looking at another way to see if two functions are inverse of each other. And in order to do that, we're going to look at function composition. Before we move on to seeing if two functions are inverse of each other, let's review function composition. Our first one says find g of f of 6. Now, if you remember correctly, function composition is just combining functions. And what you basically do is you work from right to left meaning six is my input and i'm going to first input it into f when i put it into f i'm going to get an answer and then i'm going to take that answer and put it into g for my final answer so for example i'm looking at g of f of six so i'm going to take six and put it into f first so f is two times x minus four and in place of that x i'm going to put six so f of six is going to be 12 minus four which is equal to eight so now that I got that output of 8, I'm then going to take that output of 8 and put it into G. So G is 0.5 times X, and in place of that X, I'm going to put my output, which was 8. And so 0.5 times 8 is going to give me a final answer of 4. So G of F of 6 is equal to 4. Let's try another one as review. So again, this is finding F of G of 8. This time, I'm putting the input into G first. So 8 is going to go into G. I'm going to get an answer, and then I'm going to put that answer into F. So G, again, is 0.5 times X. I'm going to take out that X and put the 8 in there. And when I do that, I get 4. Now I'm going to put that 4 into F. So F is 2 times X minus 4. I'm going to put that output that I got from G, 4, into F. And so 2 times 4 is 8, minus 4 is 4. So I got a final answer of 4. Now, sometimes if they don't give us an input, they just have X. Well, if you notice, this is F of X, hence F of X. So what this is saying is you're going to put this entire function, 2X minus 4, into g so i write down what g is so g is 0.5 x i'm going to take out the x and in place of it i'm going to put f of x which is the entire function so i'm going to put 2x minus 4 in place of that x when i do that i then distribute the 0.5 and i'll get 0.5 times 2x is just x and 0.5 times minus 4 is minus 2. So g of f of x is equal to x minus 2. Again, I can find f of g of x. In this case, again, I don't have a number as an input. I just have g of x here. So I'm going to take the entire function of g of x. I'm going to take the entire function, which is 0.5x, and I'm going to put it into f. So f in this case is 2 times x minus 4. And in place of where that x is, I'm going to put the entire function of g of x. So I'm going to put 0.5x. So when I multiply by 2, 2 times 0.5x is going to just give me an x. So it's x minus 4. So f of g of x, putting g of x into f, is equal to x minus 4. Let's look at two more. In these cases, I want to find g of f and f of g, which means I'm going to first take f and put it into g. And then I'm going to take G and put it into F and see what we get in both situations. So in number one, the first thing I'm going to do is take F of X and put it into G. So G is X on top divided by 3. And I'm going to put F of X in there, which is 3X. When I put 3X in there, I get an answer of G of F of X is equal to 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I just get X. Then I want to find the other way, f of g of x. So again, I'm going to take g and put it into f. So f in this case is 3 times x. And in place of that x, I'm going to put g. Well, what is g? g is x divided by 3. So I'm going to put x divided by 3 in the parentheses. Well, again, when I do this, I get a 3x divided by 3. The 3's cancel, 
and I'm left with just x. So f of g of x is equal to x. So in this case, no matter which one I did first, f into g or g into f, in both situations, I got an answer of x. Let's look at number two. In number two, again, the first one I want to find is g of f of x. So again, I'm going to take f and I'm going to put it into g. So g in this place is x plus 3. And in place of that x, I'm going to put f of x, which is x minus 3. So I put x minus 3 in. Well, then I have negative 3 plus 3. That gives me 0. And so all I'm left with is just this x right here. So g of f of x is equal to just x. Then I want to see what happens when I do f of g of x. So again, in this case, I'm going to take g and put it into f this time. So f is x minus 3. So g is x plus 3. And I'm going to put that in place of where the x was. So now I have x plus 3 minus 3. Well, again, in this case, I have plus 3 minus 3, which is 0. And so I have x plus 0, which is just x. So in all four of these cases that we've done so far, we're getting just x. Now, as you saw, that's not always the case. When I did g of f of x here, I got x minus 2. When I got f of g of x here, I got x minus 4. But in these cases, I'm getting just x. So something must be going on here. Before we talk about that, let's look at one more. I have f of x is x plus 3 divided by 2, and g of x is 2x minus 3. First, let's find g of f of x. So again, we're going to take f of x and put it into g. So g is 2 times x minus 3. And in place of that x, we're going to put f of x, which is x plus 3 divided by 2. So simplifying this, I have a 2 times and then a divide by 2. Well, those cancel, and so I'm left with x plus 3 minus 3. Well, plus 3 minus 3 leaves me with just x. So g of f of x, again, is equal to just x. Let's find f of g of x. So again, with f of g of x, I'm going to take g of x and I'm going to put it into f. So f is x plus 3 divided by 2. And in place of where that x is, I'm going to put g of x, which is 2x minus 3. Well, simplifying this, I have a negative 3 plus 3. That's 0. So now I have 2x divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I'm left with just x. So f of g of x is equal to just x. Again, there must be something going on with these three problems if in every case we're getting the same answer of just x. Again, we did not see that when we did these problems. So there must be something special with these three that I'm showing you. Well, let's graph these and look at what's going on. If I take number 1 and I graph 3 of x, and I graph x divided by 3, you get this blue and green line. This purple line is the line y equals x. What do you notice? This side is a reflection of this side. When the two sides reflect each other over the line y equals x, what do we learn? We learned that these are inverse functions. Let's look at number 2. I have x minus 3 and x plus 3. And so I graph them in green and blue. Again, this pink line is y equals x. Well, if you look at this side, again, it's a reflection over the line y equals x of this side. So again, these two functions are inverse of each other. Let's look at the third one. Here I have x plus 3 divided by 2 and 2x minus 3. Those are the green and blue lines. Again, this pink line is the line y equals x. And if you look at this side, it's a reflection over the line y equals x of this side, which means, once again, that these are inverse of each other. So in all three situations, these are inverse functions. And in all three situations, f of g of x and g of f of x equaled x. So what can we conclude? Well, the rule is, the big idea is that if, f of g of x is equal to x and 
g of f of x is equal to x, then f of x and g of x are inverse. If you get anything besides x, you get a 2x, a 3x, x minus 1, a 1 over x, then they're not inverse. For example, if you go back to those original problems where we were practicing function composition, we did not get just an x with this one and just an x with this one. Hence, these two functions are not inverse. But with this one, we got an x on both cases, they're inverse. On number two, we got an x in both cases, they're inverse. Number three, we got an x in both cases, they're inverse. So let's take a look at some examples of how this would actually work. So again, I have two functions, f of x equals 5x minus 1 and g of x equals x plus 1 divided by 5. And I want to use composition to see if these are inverse functions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find g of f of x, which means I'm going to take f of x and plug it into g. So g is x plus 1 divided by 5. So I'm going to take the 5x minus 1 and plug it in where x was. When I do that, I have 5x minus 1 plus 1. So negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So I have 5x divided by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. And so I end up getting x. Then I have to check it the other way. I have to check f of g of x. In this case, I'm going to take g of x and put it into f. So f is 5 times x minus 1, and in place of that x, I'm going to put g of x, which is x plus 1 divided by 5. So when you do that right away, you'll see that 5 and divided by 5 cancel. So I'm left with x plus 1 minus 1, and then the plus 1 and minus 1 is 0, so I'm left with just x. So because g of f of x is x and f of g of x is x, because both of those things are true, these two functions are definitely inverse. However, look at number two. So again, I want to see if these are inverse through function composition. So first I'm going to find g of f of x. So I'm going to take f of x and I'm going to put it into g. So g is 2 times x minus 6, and in place of that, I'm going to put f of x, which is 1 half x plus 6. When I do that, I have to distribute this 2 first, and when I distribute that 2, 2 times 1 half is 1, so I have 1x, 2 times 6 is 12, so I have plus 12, and then I have this minus 6 on the outside. Well, 12 minus 6 is going to give me x plus 6. Because this is not just an x, because it's an x plus 6, these two functions are not inverse. You can use composition to determine if two functions are inverse. Again, if g of f of x is equal to x and f of g of x is equal to x, then the two are inverse. If either of them equal anything except just an x, so in our last example, an x plus 6, then they're not inverse at all. And that's how you verify inverse functions through composition.